In this video, the 10 foods a CKD patient is eating every day to reverse stage 5 kidney disease. Sometimes, the unthinkable happens. You think you've hit rock bottom, but life's got a talent for digging even deeper. Case in point, a man staring down the barrel of stage 5 kidney disease. All hope drained, all options exhausted, only dialysis as his last resort. He's put on the fast track to a dialysis clinic. He braces for the worst. I mean, seriously, how much worse could it get? Okay, but the universe loves a plot twist, doesn't it? Because guess what? Even dialysis failed him. And what's left when even the life raft sinks? Well, first of all, you gotta stay relaxed. Here is where the story takes a turn that will make even Hollywood jealous. Just when it seemed all was lost, our guy did the unthinkable. With some serious diet changes and lifestyle tweaks, he didn't just tread water. He swam back to shore. Stage 5 to stage 4 with a GFR boost that had the doctors double checking their charts. And today, we are going to see exactly how this man eats every day. Catherine here, I'm a doctor in natural medicine and I've been helping people with CKD improving for more than a decade. Today we're going to focus on what really works for every single CKD patient. The low protein diet. Now guys, the intro of this video is all about the case study published on a peer-reviewed medical journal, the World Journal of Nephrology and Urology. The patient, an 81-year-old, successfully avoided dialysis, mostly with a strict low-protein diet. And there's really a lot we can learn from his story. So let's cut to the chase. Let's see the food this man eats to keep the dialysis machine at bay. Let's start with the only food group that's basically protein free. Do you know what food group I'm referring to? It's fruit. Yes, you heard that right. Fruit. Next time you're staring into the fridge wondering what the heck you can eat without sabotaging your kidneys, just grab some fruit. Want some examples? Well, if you're looking to add some flair, vitamins, and antioxidants to your diet but without protein, look no farther than the mighty mango. Mangoes are like nature's candy, but don't let the sweetness fool you. These bad boys are packed with benefits, and some folks shy away from mangoes because of the sweetness of these fruits, but that's just nonsense. Mangoes are actually linked to improved insulin resistance. Mango are in fact loaded with fiber and pectin, which are fantastic for controlling cholesterol and blood sugar levels. Plus, they're swimming in polyphenols, including mangifrin, the super antioxidant that's linked to less diabetes and kidney disease risk. Okay, another underrated food for the renal diet, the avocado. If you're looking to keep your carb intake low, Avocado is your best friend. This green wonder is bursting with vitamin C, E, K, and B6, plus a ton of other nutrients you can't even pronounce but definitely need. Avocados are like the overachievers of the fruit world rich in antioxidants and anti-inflammatory compounds. They're here to protect your kidneys from oxidative damage. Oh, and they've got more healthy fats and fiber than a health nuts Instagram feed. And by the way, these fruits are super low in protein, and that's even more important. There's only one diet that has been proven effective in all the stages of CKD to slow down or even stop 
the progression of the disease. A plant-based diet that's rich in vitamins and antioxidants but low in protein, sodium and phosphorus. Yep, that's the secret sauce that saved this man from dialysis. So if you want to beat CKD, take note, you're not just what you eat, you're also what you don't eat. But variety is not just the spice of life, it's the backbone of a renal diet that works. So let's see some underrated fruit choices, maybe something exotic. This is a pitaya or dragon fruit, as the cool kids call it. This fruit is native to Central America but also grown in Vietnam, Australia and Thailand. And this is an incredibly nutritious superfood, so rich in antioxidants that it has been proven to lower the risk for heart disease and hypertension. And yeah, it might be tough to find, but if you just stumble across one at the Asian market, grab it like your kidneys depend on it. Okay, I'm exaggerating here, but just a little bit. Not many people know this, but the pitaya isn't just pretty to look at. It's one of the few fruits that actually contain iron. Yes, you heard that right, iron. And let's be real, if there is one mineral CKD patients need more of, it's iron. But wait, there is more. Pitaya also boasts more magnesium than most fruits. So it's like a two for one deal. Keep that in mind the next time you're strolling through the exotic fruit section. Okay guys, of course this patient isn't eating just fruit, we will also see some staple foods in a moment. Before that, I know what some of you guys are going to ask. But Catherine, I'm already following a vegetarian diet, how is this man diet any different? So. If you're already a vegetarian, how is this diet any different from yours? Well guys, there is a huge difference between being a vegetarian or vegan and following a renal diet. So here's the thing, veganism is a lifestyle, alright? Here's the deal, veganism is a lifestyle, right? Some people do it because of their culture, others to save the animals to protect the environment or maybe just to fit into that hemp sweater they bought at the farmer's market. And I'm not gonna judge but I'm not here to preach about saving the whales or hugging trees, alright? This diet is all about saving your kidneys, not the planet. You all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? Yeah. I know, I know, but it's a lot easier to care about the environment when you are young and healthy. In fact, on a plant-based renal diet, you might even sneak in some animal-based foods. That's right, vegans, clutch your pearls. Some of my patients eat egg whites. Why? Because they're a complete protein with barely any phosphorus. But of course, this only works if your total protein intake stays low enough to keep your kidneys happy. On the flip side, you might need to avoid certain veggies that are packing more protein than a gym bros shake. Lentils, black beans, lima beans, yeah, those bad boys are not exactly kidney friendly in this context. So it turns out a medical diet is a tad more complicated than just, you know, talking about kale and quinoa like your local activist. Now, back to our stage 5 miracle patient who managed to turn things around and avoid dialysis. But guess what? Kidney failure wasn't the only thing he was dealing with. This patient was also constipated. Yep, you heard that right. Constipation, of all things, was a major hurdle. I know, I know, you're thinking, seriously? He's in stage 5 and can't do dialysis and we're talking about constipation? But here's the kicker, the doctors were spot on in trending this as a big deal. Why? Because the gut isn't just where food goes to hang out, it's a battlefield and your kidneys are right in the line of fire. And the reason is not what you think. Now guys, let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, doctors were obsessed with potassium levels in CKD patients. Their solution was simple, too much potassium, just stop eating bananas, avocados, tomatoes and potatoes, boom and boom! 
problem solve. Except, not really. Raise your hand if this sounds painfully familiar. And what all this has to do with constipation, you may ask. Well, you see, it turned out that forbidding CKD patients from eating most common fruit and veggies was a bad idea. The reason why that's a bad idea are many, and constipation is definitely one of them. In fact, as we can read what happens when a CKD patient is deprived of the most common fruits and veggies is that they don't get enough fiber and they may become constipated. Now, when you are constipated, the food you eat spends way more time in your intestine, all right? What these tend to cause is a raise in your serum potassium levels. Yeah, for many patients, avoiding bananas is the cause of hyperkalemia. Talk about irony. But if serum potassium levels are more correlated to how much time food spends in your intestine than the actual potassium content of the food you eat, what about uremic toxins, you may ask? Isn't a patient who has constipation more likely to have high creatinine and high urea and uric acid as well? Well, if you really thought that, congratulations. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. In fact, one of the ways in which the new diet this patient started help him was by reducing the amount of uremic toxins he was absorbing from food. And now you may ask, Catherine, what foods should we eat to improve gut health and lower toxin absorption in the gut? Well, there are other well, there are a few foods that are great to reduce transit time in the gut. Most famous probably are plums and prunes. Yeah, if you have ever suffered from constipation, they are probably one of the first remedies you tried and probably with some success. Plums are packed with sorbitol and phenolic compounds, which are just fancy words for nature's laxatives. Plus, they're a solid addition to any renal diet Plums belong to the same family as peaches, nectarines, and apricots. And they're even richer in antioxidants and these fruits, especially anthocyanins, a specific type of polyphenols that gives them their dark color. And guys, when it comes to antioxidants, more is always better. Load up like it's Black Friday and they're on sale. Now, plums are in season right now, which is awesome, but prunes, those little shred powerhouses, are available year-round. They've got most of the same benefits with just one catch. They're dried, meaning they've got more calories and minerals per bite. So if you're adding prunes to your lineup, remember that moderation is key. Now, a little known food combination that can also work to relieve constipation is papaya and flaxseed. These two are like the Batman and Robin of bowel movements. You see, these foods both help the good functioning of the intestine since papaya is rich in fiber and beta-carotene and it also contains an enzyme called papain. Papain can help digestion and it is also considered a remedy for constipation and other symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome. Flaxseed, on the other hand, is a source of both soluble and insoluble fiber which helps with intestinal transit. A great combination of foods to improve gas Held. Speaking of gut saving heroes, let's not forget the kiwi fruit. The amount of health benefits this little fruit packs never cease to amaze me. In fact, the kiwi is not just one of the foods that are richest in vitamin C. It's also linked to direct improvements in your blood pressure. Not to mention that kiwis are also rich in sorbitol, the natural laxative plums have, and in an enzyme called actinidin, which also aids in digestion. And guys, fruits like this should be the backbone of your diet. Pile them high, eat them often, and don't sweat the potassium. If your potassium is high, you might actually need more fruit, not less. Now, I can hear the diabetes crowd in the back going, but won't all that fruit spike my blood sugar? And that's a good observation. Of course, you should pay attention at the amount of carbs you eat if you have diabetes. But here's the thing. While all fruits are low in protein, not all of them are rich in carbs. 
Take avocados, olives, and coconuts, for example. These are like the rebel fruits. They're richer in healthy fats than carbs, making them perfect for people with diabetes. Plus, fruits are nutrient-dense but low in calories, which means they're a dream come true for anyone trying to shed some pounds. And guys, that's literally how you flip the bird to diabetes. And let's talk about science for a second. Recent research is starting to challenge the old notion that sugar spikes your insulin more than protein. Wait, wait, wait. What? Now, I'm not suggesting that you eat refined sugar or ultra-processed carbs. That stuff is never healthy. But before you even think about cutting fruit from your diet, make sure you have already removed all the protein you can. Seriously, your kidneys will thank you later. Okay guys, it looks like this whole renal diet concept is more complicated than it looks on the surface. Yeah, welcome to my world. But actually, the most complicated part of the renal diet is not, you know, keeping up to date about the most recent guidelines. It's the personalization. Many plant-based foods have health benefits, but CKD patients can't eat an infinite amount of food every day. And this, of course, makes finding the perfect food items to add to the diet of a patient even more crucial. How to do that? Well, maybe I can help. As some of you already know, I've started offering remote one-on-one -on -one video naturopathic consultations, which means that I have already met some fantastic people from my audience that are very knowledgeable about their health and very determined to improve it. And from now on, they will be able to do that with my direct help as well. And I have also decided to free up more time in the upcoming weeks so that I will be able to help more of you guys with my work. So if your goal is protecting the health of your kidneys and you are tired of guessing what works for you and what doesn't, well, send an email to Catherine at newhopeforkidneypatients.com so we will be able to talk. You will also find a link in the description to contact me directly if you are interested. Okay guys, some more low protein food staples to take a look at. Because of course, even if limiting protein intake is one of the key factors in beating kidney disease, it's unlikely that a diet comprised of only fruit could work. So let's see what veggies are the lowest in protein, shall we? Starting with carrots. Okay, when it comes to the renal diet, few foods are as underrated as the humble carrot. Carrots are not just lower in protein than most other veggies. Carrots are alkaline, meaning that they protect your kidneys from excess acid in blood, a common issue for CKD patients. And they also have detoxifying benefits thanks to their high content of beta-carotene, the water-soluble vitamin A. If that wasn't enough to add carrots to your diet, a very recent study was able to link carrot consumption to lower risk for high blood pressure. So yeah, if you think carrots are just for bunnies, your kidneys would like a word. Another food that's not recommended often enough, onions. These little tear jerkers are criminally underrated in the kidney world. Super low in protein, onions are a rich source fiber and prebiotics which are necessarily for optimal gut health. And people with kidney problems should be eating onions every day for a lot of... <clears throat> And people with kidney problems should be eating onions every day for a lot of other reasons too. They're anti-inflammatory, they lower LDL cholesterol, that's the bad kind, and they're pretty much a kidney's dream vegetable. Oh, and that sulfur that makes you cry when you chop them? It turns out it's also a powerful detoxifier. And a food group that has almost zero protein, just like fruits, are mushrooms. Of course, the usual recommendation here are shiitake mushrooms as they reach in vitamin D, especially sun-dried shiitake mushrooms that are usually pretty easy to find since they are packaged. Now, shiitake mushrooms also help with cholesterol levels thanks to their erythadenin and beta-glucans content. But hey, don't stop at shiitake. Most mushrooms are welcome on the renal diet.
So go ahead, get adventurous with whatever fresh fungi you can find at your local grocery store. Just don't try to pick them yourself unless you've got a mycology degree. And guys, if you want to know more about what foods you can eat and what you must avoid, my video up here is for you. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye-bye.